July was bringing America a wave of urban riots never before seen. The desperate cry of the poor of all races was demanding the nation's attention. No thoughtful person could deny that the immediate need for improved housing, health, education, employment opportunity, and hope for the future must receive affluent America's highest priority. The ghetto explosions gave new emphasis to administration efforts to expand its programs to meet those needs. The harsh reality was thrust on the Congress and the majority of the people of the extreme necessity to better the life of America's poor. No one believed that centuries-old inequities could be cured instantly. However, new and massive social rebuilding was becoming imperative. Of the 70 major riots to strike America during this troubled summer, the worst of the year and the nation's history would hit Michigan's largest city. Extremists and opportunists were perverting a just cause and protest. Violence and lawlessness became ends in themselves. On July 24th, for the first time in a quarter of a century, a state governor requested federal troops to put down a disorder beyond his control. Within hours, the president responded by sending 4,700 soldiers into the riot area. At midnight, as soldiers restored peace to the streets of America's fifth largest city, President Johnson addressed the nation. Law enforcement is a local matter. It is the responsibility of local officials and the governors of the respective states. The federal government should not intervene except in the most extraordinary circumstances. The fact of the matter, however, is that law and order have broken down in Detroit, Michigan. Pillage, looting, murder, and arson have nothing to do with civil rights. They are criminal conduct. And the federal government, in the circumstances here presented, had no alternative but to respond. I know that with few exceptions, the people of Detroit and the people of Newark and the people of Harlem and of all of our American cities, however troubled they may be, deplore and condemn these criminal acts. I know that the vast majority of Negroes and whites are shocked and are outraged by them. A troubled month was closing with the country and the president receiving increasingly harsh reports of widespread urban unrest. Under President Johnson's administration, new efforts to uplift America range from housing standards that would eliminate city tenements to a billion dollar agency to combat poverty. These impressive breakthroughs serve to highlight the fact that even more concerted efforts to raise living and opportunity standards for millions of Americans held in poverty's grip are needed. On July 29th, President Johnson established a special advisory commission on civil disorders to delve deeply into the social soul of the nation. It will be led by Illinois Governor Otto Kerner and New York City Mayor John V. Lindsay. The president reminded the commission, no society can tolerate massive violence any more than a body can tolerate massive disease. But just saying that does not solve the problem. We need to know the answer, I think, to three basic questions about these riots. What happened? Why did it happen? What can be done to prevent it from happening again and again? What we're really asking for is a profile of the riots, of the rioters, of their environment, of their victims, of their causes and effects. July closed on a nation whose social fabric was being tested as never before. Forced on the nation and the majority of people was the fact that many painful months and years lay ahead. The solution of decades-old problems had become a national imperative. And let us build something much more lasting. Faith between man and man. Faith between race and race. Faith in each other and faith in the promise of beautiful America. Let us pray for the day when mercy and truth are met together. Let us pray and let us work for better jobs, better housing, and better education that so many millions of our own fellow Americans need so much. Let us then act in the Congress and in the city halls 
and in every community so that this great land of ours may truly be one nation under God with liberty and justice for all.